Welcome back to another episode of Salesy. Uh, clearly, I am excited to be here and excited to serve you. Before we dive in today's episode, I wanted to give you an opportunity to work with me further. Scale to 5K is my signature group program that helps entrepreneurs like you start hitting consistent 5K months and grow their online business. We focus on the foundations of business, so offers, pricing, products, marketing, sales, how to sign clients, how to raise your prices, and all of those things. This framework has graduated over 100 students in the last four years and has actually built my own business to multiple six figures in the first calendar year and even building these massive launches that you saw this year and last year. If you are someone who you know this is the next step for you and you are ready to see the sales page and apply to the program, go ahead and click into the show notes. It's always linked down there. And ready or not, we're heading into the next episode. Welcome back to another episode of Salesy. I am so excited because today I have Shannon Gallagher, who is a spiritual biz coach for entrepreneurs. I first actually connected with Shannon on TikTok and found her on TikTok. And when I was thinking about guests to bring in for this season and people I wanted to introduce you to, I really resonated with the things that she was saying around spirituality, business ownership, and all of those things. So I am so excited for you to hear from her and just the little tidbits inside of this conversation today. I'm so excited to have you here. Just to kick us off, how did you get started in business? How did you get wrangled into all of this? Hello. So um, very beginning was fall of 2021. No, 2020. Uh, yeah, because we were in the pandemic for a couple of months and I started learning about being a virtual assistant and I was currently in the corporate world. I was doing marketing. I was working for a very big company that made a lot of money for other rich people. And it just kind of irked me. And I was like, I'm not doing anything that's directly helping those that actually need the help. And it was making me feel really anxious in my day to day. My stuff was like the tasks that I was doing were so mundane. And so um, once we switched to the pandemic and I was working from home, I was like, you know what? I want to do my own thing. I want to try to make some money on the side. And I want it to be so much more spiritual than being in a corporate marketing position where I'm the only woo woo girl in the entire department. So um, I started as a VA and just started reaching out to some people that I knew that kind of had their own businesses. And I made an Instagram, which is obviously in my eyes, it's like one of the number one ways to market yourself uh, through through a business Instagram. And then soon after that, um, I was able to leave my corporate job and go full time as a VA and an online business manager. And then I moved into coaching like maybe like two months after I went full time because I was like, this is a lot more aligned than doing the admin work. I like doing a lot more of the strategy and the guidance and the um, the coaching together. So that's how I got into like business as a whole. It's so funny because I feel like 99% of us started as virtual assistants. Like I started as a virtual assistant and hated admin work. Most of my clients I know started as virtual assistants. It's kind of like the, it's the gateway of like, oh, I can work online. I can make money. It is totally the gateway. And I look at it as there's so many ways right now to be making money online. And I tell my clients this too. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, well, maybe I want to try, you know, affiliate marketing or I want to do drop shipping and things like that. And I'm like, I want you to only be doing something that's actually interesting and fun to you or it is going to become just another job as if you are working at your corporate job. So virtual assisting, I think, is something people actually really enjoy to do, at least in the beginning. Like everything that I was doing as as an admin was so similar to what I was doing in the corporate marketing side of things. So it was a really easy jump. And I'm, I love being organized. I love planning. I love stuff like that. So I think a lot of people can relate. And then once I even talked about this on my story the other day, once you get 
into like your own business, you kind of get the bug and you're like, let me try out this, you know, like you, the opportunities are now endless because you kind of have that feeling of fearlessness once you've started. And I think that when people find the alignment in what they they actually truly want to do as a business owner does that make sense yeah it's like the continuous up level of like okay like I'm gonna get in I'm gonna get out of you know working in corporate is just like it can be so soul-sucking for some people some people love it but I am not one of those people like fluorescent lighting first and foremost not a fan uh meetings also not a fan but it is that like start. And then I feel like that confidence of like, oh, I can like make money how I want to online is super, it's, it's super like exciting because you're like, oh, I don't have to stick to these specific things. You mentioned that you're spiritual. How do you define spirituality? How did you get into it? Like what was kind of that gateway? That's a good question. Uh, spirituality How the heck do I like define this? Um, I think it's something that you kind of, it's almost like believing in yourself almost more than other things. So people will consider themselves religious and that means a lot of the time that they are praying and they are reaching out to whatever they believe in, whether it's God or spirit guides or things like that. So in a spirituality standpoint, I look at it as similarly where we have guides as well. It's almost like a religion. Um, And those guides are just kind of tapping into what we need. And it's more about like going a little bit more inward and listening to ourselves rather than trying to find the answers outwardly. And I feel like I've never... Well, I did go through a really scary spiritual awakening a couple years ago, but I think I've always felt like it's just normal in my life. Although I did grow up Catholic and my family, my parents were always grew up Catholic. They went to school there and things like that. And, um, but my mom's been always kind of interested in these things a little bit more than others where my grandma, when she passed, she kind of struggled to move over into the other realm. And so my mom and some of her siblings and cousins went and met with a medium to talk to um, my mom on the other side. And I feel like a lot of like the older generations wouldn't necessarily do that. So I do really feel like her being so open to it fully just made it so normal to me like oh yeah grandma is here with us or my aunt who passed away a couple years ago like sometimes we'll smell her scent or we'll find her jewelry and we'll think of her so um I think it's been basically my whole life and I love that I can really make it like priority now when I'm working with myself and then with my clients too That's such a cool experience. I feel like sometimes though, it feels very taboo to talk about. Like my brother unfortunately passed away in 2016 and like he, he speaks through the radio. It's so weird. It's through music. It's so weird because it's also like my partner and I go to Pilates and they play, uh, we get to pick the music because it's like private Pilates. We know the person and we were on like an alternative station and then it switched to like U2 and I'm like U2 is not alternative music it's technically rock and it was just like oh I was like thinking about my brother and it was like he could sense that feeling um which is so crazy because I think like you said a lot of the older generation they really viewed it as witchcraft and it was wrong and it's like I think that's the exciting part also about being business owners is we have so much more mental space to actually explore things because we're not you know, most of us aren't working like a full 40 or more than 40 hours a week. That's very true too. It's a lot of research and thinking and planning outside of the box. I think because we're not necessarily strained to just doing the tasks and getting finished with them and then going home, making dinner and going to bed, you know? So I totally agree with that. And um, I'm sorry about your brother, but it does sound like he comes and visits, which is like the best thing, you know, like that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, it's been, God, how long has it been? It's been, it'll be seven years in October. So it's like, I definitely have processed through a lot of grief, which entrepreneurship actually gave me the opportunity. So, uh, I've been in therapy for about 
two years now. <laughs> no plans on graduating though. Everyone's like, are you going to graduate? And I'm like, no, I'm going to stay in therapy as long as I can. I'm a super senior, quadruple <laughs> senior. I love how you mentioned though, schedules and routines and yeah. really starting to build that. Something that I found really hard in my first year was building a schedule that didn't mimic a nine to five and how to build routines because as entrepreneurs too, like when we're no longer in our jobs, a lot of our routines that we had before are cycling around our jobs. So if you want to dive into that, I think that's a great starting point. Oh my God. Gosh, yes. And like you said, that first year, that first year is so confusing with what you're supposed to be doing. And um, I am an avid napper. I like to nap a lot. I like to sleep in. And that is honestly a big reason why I was felt so confined in a nine to five, because I was like, I don't want to get up at 6 a.m. to go drive an hour to work, like shower, get ready and and sit at my desk all day like I want to sleep in until 10 or 11 or 12. So I think the most important thing is finding the schedule that's going to work for you. Uh, especially with women, we have these waves of like emotions and energy throughout the day, throughout the month. And I'm actually starting to learn a little bit more about like cycle syncing. Have you heard of that? Oh my God. I cycle sync ever since I got off birth control. And let me tell you, okay, this is why we're recording a podcast. Cause I'm in, I'm ovulating right now. I'm like 99% sure. Uh, I am glowing. I am like, I feel good. Like I feel like, which would make sense. Right. Cause when you're ovulating, you're like procreation yep. is on your mind not that I'm not trying to have a baby y'all. I'm just saying, I feel good. But yeah, it's so true. Cycle syncing is something I started exploring in 2020 as I was getting off birth control because I was like, I felt lied to, first of all, 24 hour cycles are men's cycles. The man's bringing us down. Just kidding. I do. I do love men. Um, but the other side of that was something that I noticed too. It was like, why do I feel good at certain times of the month versus not? And that it is your cycle. Like as you come off of so technically our cycles focus around ovulation. They don't actually focus around periods. So when you get into your follicular phase, you're like leading up to ovulating. So you're building a lot of energy. You have a lot of energy. That's where like I get the majority of my work done. But after you ovulate, you go into your luteal phase and like luteal phase crustiness, you, first of all, you have to eat more calories, which I didn't realize. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. why I'm so hungry before my period. But second of all, uh, you're tired. You need to sleep more. You need to rest up. And like, when you mentioned napping, I'm like, I can't wait to finish ovulating, <laughs> go into my luteal phase and get a really good nap. Like it's the best time to nap. It's so wild that like only recently has this become more and more known like how have how have we been like surviving without I don't know managing our days and schedules to match that so I'm on the very like beginning cusp of it like I don't know enough about it so even what you just told me like that was a full educational topic for me so thank you uh but I guess hand in hand with that in the beginning stages of starting that business especially when you go full-time it's really good to sit down and actually think about when am I energized throughout the day you know when do I want to eat during the day do I want to sleep in and then we build around that schedule and a couple of my clients actually just went from part-time to quitting their corporate job moving into full-time and, and before we even get to the full-time stage, we are figuring out, okay, what are you going to do if you're not sitting at your desk from nine to five? When do you want to have meetings? One of my clients is like, end of the day, you know, 5 p.m., I need to rest in the evenings. I don't want to take calls at night. Um, I don't want to have sessions at night. Perfect. We can work around that. So I think that's the number one thing, figuring out your wants and needs within your schedule. And then from there, kind of splitting it up into like morning, afternoon, and evening type of vibes. Um, and then I personally like to add in the spiritual practices within each of those schedules to kind of match your day. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I remember when I like fully left corporate, I went to a contract job and it was teaching kids. So they had to take lunch every single day. 
and I'd be done by like three o'clock and it was like, oh my gosh, like what's going on. The interesting thing that you mentioned though, is finding something that works for your energy. And I think a lot of people struggle is that like, I think there's two types of people. I think there's people who start with a lot of energy and then it wanes out throughout the day. And then there's people who have to like build their energy throughout the day. I am like energizer bunny. I'm a morning person. My partner is not a morning person. He, he is not ready to start in the morning. Like Sundays I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to clean our whole house. It's going to be the cleanest house ever. And he's like, Jesus Christ. He's like, please have mercy. And he like really has to build it. But it's also, you know, when you get to dictate your schedule, there is freedom in finding what works best for you. And it could also change. That's the thing that like, I think I got so sucked in when I started is like, I got sucked into like having a perfect morning routine and then realizing that like my morning routine is literally get up, brush my teeth, put some clothes on, do some work, eat breakfast. I always have to eat breakfast first, eat breakfast, have a little morning chunk. And then it's like, I could take a break, do some other stuff, dive into more work, which that's like completely different than what you're learned in the nine to five. When it comes to building habits and routines, what kind of advice would you give someone? Cause I feel like there's an easy fall off rate when it comes to like habits and like building a good morning routine or a good evening routine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and I also like really struggle with habits. I think I've needed help with the accountability on that kind of thing because it is so difficult to actually build in a habit. Um, I'd say something that's really helpful, again, kind of going into what naturally starts to happen throughout like your week, your month, what feels good for you. So for example, like with you, you said, you know, before your schedule was a little bit different, but now in the morning, you know, you want to eat breakfast, you brush your teeth, like you get changed, things like that. And they're simple and they're easy and you can just do it every day. So finding things that feel really good for you. So for me, if I know that I'm going to be sleeping in a little bit later, I'm looking at my schedule the night before to be like, okay, in the morning I have time to, to wake up slowly And then what is the first thing that I usually like to do? I like to cook a really nice breakfast. I'm not like a munch and go type of person. So I'm going to like incorporate that time into my day where I have rather than 15 minutes, I'm going to wean into it. Similar to what you said, I, I have to build up the energy throughout the day. I don't have any when I wake up. So finding the habits that are going to work best for you and then staying on top of them. But if it is something that's going to work for you, it should naturally happen. Yeah. I think something to consider too, is like, it's going to be different for every person. And that's, that's like the hard part. And then accountability and permission to forgive yourself when you fall off the wagon because like if you're anything like me I'm neurodivergent I have ADHD and so it's like there's a hundred percent relapse rate and so it's like oh maybe this routine you know used to serve me but now it currently there's no point in shaming myself if it's not you know right on par perfect I know in pre-roll we talked about kind of the rise of like the it girl and TikTok and this pressure to have these really like almost like militaristic formulaic routines what would you tell someone who maybe struggles with that Yeah. And I think it relates to, like you said, with society right now, there is that there's a nine to five, but then if you've seen like the five to nine as well, what can I accomplish from five to 9 AM? And what can I accomplish from five to 9 PM after my nine to five? Like to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm already tired, even like visualizing or thinking about that. And it is a very masculine way to be working to constantly be needing to accomplish things and something that's been going around I forget what it is it's some type of phrase related to rather than just accomplishing things our purpose in life is really to just be present and I think related to scheduling especially in the mornings finding some more feminine energy where you are waking up and flowing and connecting with yourself is going to make your day a lot smoother. Um, Taking time to take care of yourself, to prioritize yourself, where you are sitting with your thoughts or you're journaling any thoughts that popped up when you first wake up. Because if you're like me, 
you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, I have a thousand things to do. Writing it down, getting it out of your mind, and then sitting with your body, maybe moving a little bit. Um, I always use sage and palo santo to cleanse my energy. And then starting to work on those tasks. But um, it's I think it's tough from a societal norm. But if you are moving into being your own entrepreneur, you already are kind of going against the grain and going away from that societal norm. So my hopes are that you're a little bit more open to trying to kind of slow things down and get into more of your feminine energy so you can uh, make more of a balance. So you're not as hard pressed in the masculine. I did the math one time and I'm like, that's a 16 hour day. If you're waking up at 5 a.m. and you're going to bed at 9 p.m., that is a 16 hour day, which means you're only sleeping eight hours a night. And like, listen, I'm like a 10 hours. I, I need 10 hours of sleep, maybe nine. I at least need time to read before bed. And that, that I think is also the harder part of like, going against the grain and becoming an entrepreneur is also finding an identity outside of it. And that feminine energy, you know, we do have like the standard depiction of feminine energy, right? The dancing, the skirts, the dress, which I love dresses, don't get me wrong, the painting. But there's also kind of this, like when I think about feminine energy, I actually think about our rescue dog. Our rescue dog has a mothering heart for some reason. She would have been the perfect little mother. She she likes to mother me or she'll come up to my face and like lick my face. And she's always... She'll like paw at me when she needs attention or she sleeps in the bed with us, which I was completely against when we first got her, where it's like, she's always having that, like, you need to be taken care of energy. And that's where it's also like, if you're caught up doing all these things from five to nine, then going to your job and then doing it. And then it's like, you remove the job. You're still in that hustle. It's like, where could you take a moment to take care of yourself? Because the other thing is that a lot of people don't talk about is that like those moments of going for the walk of that mindful movement are actually super beneficial for you because you are starting to create and do more and really shift into this identity where it's like you are the face of a brand, you are building a brand. And so you are creating content. And if you're coaching, you're creating curriculum and you're learning all these things. And it's like, you have to have that intentional space. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's completely a balance too. Um, did you say that you have to like read before bed? I have to. I have yeah, to read so every night before bed. That is like the perfect habit for you because I've tried like thousands of times to like lay down before bed and read and it just doesn't work so I'm like I have to stop forcing this because it's not a habit for myself but for others it's perfect um there's some and kind of similarly to just always as an entrepreneur we're always learning and growing and finding new things that we're interested in a lot of times I almost push that kind of stuff off until the evening and I've noticed maybe in the past four or five months by the evening, I'm really exhausted. I don't want to suddenly jump into a course and start learning. So instead, I now need to put that at the time where I have a lot of energy during the day, usually around 12 or 1 p.m. And that can be a change of my schedule that's going to match better of what I need. I think reading is so interesting because like I, I've always been a reader, but when I got into business, I started reading significantly more. And then it was like, I fell in the trap of like only reading nonfiction. Don't get me wrong. I love nonfiction. Like I literally have like shelves and shelves of nonfiction. Oh my gosh. Color coordinated. Oh my God. Color coordinated. <laughs> but uh, the other side, I think that a lot of people have to understand too, is it's just like you figure out what's best for you. And that's where it's the, that's, I think that's the coolest part about entrepreneurship though, is you do get this entombment where it's like, when I was managing and before I left my management job, it was always like, when I had hard days, it was like, I had to dig deep and be like, how many days do I have to the weekend? How can I do this? And now it's like, if I have a hard day, I'm like, what do I need to get done? What can get pushed? And then it's like, can I honor this energy? Because that's the other cool part where it's like, as we talked about cycle syncing, it's like, if I have a luteal phase, garbage. Don't expect me to do much. If I'm like the three days before my period, I'm cranky, which some people will be like, it's PMS. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm tired. 
and I'm starving. So I'm like, please don't expect me to work. Where it's like before in my job, I would just go have a bad day at work for three days in a row and then get my period and be like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. And it's something that I think a lot of times we don't even notice or we don't realize when it's coming or anything because we're so out of touch with our bodies and what they actually need. And I think staying in kind of that masculine energy, like we were talking about, just go, 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 tasks, what can I accomplish? We almost become in a robotic state where we forget that we need to eat and we need to drink water and we need to exercise and we need to like relax our brains and we need to rest and things like that. Um, so yeah, definitely. And it's it's really cool that um, you've gotten into reading my goal. I have a I have tons of books too, but I don't do it. And I, it like I'll get into them slowly and certain ones I'll pick up and I'll read portions of it, but um, it's been tough for me to actually sit down and like thoroughly read something. I did listen to a pod, no, not a podcast, um, an audio book recently. Mm -hmm. It was called Judgment Detox. But even then, when I'm just listening, it's so different than reading a book. Do you get into like audio books or are you like, a oh, yeah, read the actual physical book? I am like a consume all information, even read the cereal box type of person. Uh, when I was little, my mom tested for Audible before the Amazon acquisition. So uh, my mom has the best Audible library. The thing about reading versus audiobooks versus all those things is you also have to find what excites you. Uh, when I started business, I read a lot of like how to start your business books. And actually this year was the year I was like, I'm not reading those anymore. Like I've started a business. I've built a very successful business. I have been like in a stoism rut. Uh, I love Ryan Holiday. If you've never read Ryan Holiday, he's a little bit quicker. Uh, he's really good. Rob Green is super controversial, but he is also super good. He wrote the 48 Laws of Power, which take it, take it as you will. Um, but Ryan Holiday was Rob Green's assistant. So he was his research assistant. So he's helped on some of those books. The thing about reading though, is when you read a lot of books, you quit a lot of books. And so it's like, if you're not excited about the book, like sometimes it's the wrong time. Like there was, there was a book I read recently that I'm like, I'm so glad I quit this and I came back to it because coming back to it. Oh, it was uh Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. Mm. I read a lot of Brene Brown last year. I love her. If you ever want to dive into like really good written books, that's her. But Braving the Wilderness is talking about vulnerability and connection. And obviously I've been going through a vulnerability journey, going to therapy, right? Getting into all of those really like healing and processing. And I started it last year, set it down, never picked it back up again. And I took it camping with me. So I was like, I am physically in the wilderness. I am raising the wilderness. That's not really what it was about, but it was so powerful in that moment. And I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated because they're like, oh, well, I've started a lot of books and I have a lot of books going at once. And it's like some books are better for you in different seasons. There's also some books that are really good to come back to, but a lot of like mainstream nonfiction is not as enjoyable as it could be. Uh, for those of you who are like listening and want to start reading, you can also start with fiction. Just reading in general is good for you. And you are so right. I always think about like it's almost like a me problem that I'm like oh I just don't do well with reading books but maybe it's I'm gonna pull my list like... for you let me see how many books I've started that <laughs> exist in my goodreads that are I'll give you like a real number to work with and it's a it's a large oh, one last oh, time I checked it was large let's see oh goodreads updated excuse me goodreads look at you okay Give it a second to load. Currently, I have started and have not finished. It's loading. God, it's going to be like 20 something. It's going to be oh bad. Gosh. It's bad. <laughs> 35. 35. Okay, I feel so much better. Thank you. I have 35. <laughs> and it ranges. The thing is, is it ranges like how completed they are. Like some of them are literally like 50%. I could finish them and some it's like 2%. That's the thing though about books though, is that like some of them will grab you and then some you have to come back to. 
some are like some books I'm like some I've dragged myself through just to like finish it and didn't enjoy it that's the other thing I think a lot of people don't talk about is like you could DNF a book you could say I did not finish this I did not enjoy it or I like skimmed it and I got through the pieces that I can that's something that like it's not you're not a failure if you don't finish a whole book it's actually okay if you don't enjoy every single book like recently Book Talk talks a lot about the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Sorry, Book Talk. Sorry, people who love it. I hated it. I thought it was terrible. Like, it's just, it's also so subjective too. And that's like the cool thing about it. Just like routines and habits. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, oh, what was I going to say? Something about, oh, just in general, with not finishing things and it being okay I feel like I realized that maybe about a year ago um and especially for me like it's tv shows or movies like if I don't get into the first couple episodes I just stop watching it and I don't care at all and I know so many people that will be like no I started it I have to finish it and to me that is a waste of your time Like, if you're not interested in it, let's try something new. Like, you do not have to finish anything all the way through if you are not feeling it. Um, And I think I think it kind of come back comes back to like knowing yourself and like knowing your intuition and what really really lights you up and especially as a business entrepreneur, like if something is feeling forced and like out of alignment, there should be no reason why you continue on that exact same path. Let's just tweak it. Let's, let's go down a different lane, you know, and that is probably going to get us to an even better ending, um, or like place than, than forcing yourself down this road that you don't really feel connected to going down. Yeah. I think there's two sides of it. I think it's like, if you don't feel passionate about something, so I mean, passion will wane. There is like a starting this type of passion. And as you get into it, there's more, it's more of like, a, it's like an ember. It's less of like a forest fire. When you start a business, it's like a freaking forest fire. You're like, I am lit up. I am ready to take on the world. But as you grow into years, you know, three and I'm It will be four years since I started coaching in August and it's, it's an ember. It's something that you definitely have stoked and grown, but I think there is self-sabotaging and not completing things that you're passionate about because of perfectionism. And I always say like done is better than perfect in that situation. And then there are opportunities, you know, there have been times that I've done things just to do it because I'm like following through on it. And when I sat back and like, you know, I had the intuitive nudge long ago to quit this. What would you say though, for you, where is the line between someone who's maybe always starting stopping and not seeing progress versus somebody who's like, this is no longer in alignment? There is definitely a difference. I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to kind of like hint at it that like, if you are just continuing to start things and not follow through with them and not finish them, there's another type of issue. Um, that needs to be uncovered um, in some way, like kind of like a mindset, you know, where it's great that you're trying, but um, I guess I would say it definitely depends on the person, the situation, but, and the, and the thing that's happening, if you don't finish a book, no big deal, but if you have a lot more on the line, I think pushing through things like you said with an ember it's not going to be high vibe 24 7 there's going to be these lows there's going to be these do I even want to do this should I be hopping off the train right now and or should I be sticking through it I think a lot of times is kind of like like I said with the tweaking of where you're going maybe potentially not just throwing out the entire thing you're working on but let's see what you do enjoy with whatever project or task or program that you're working on. How can we modify this so it feels a lot better? Because most of the time, it is very simple changes that you need to implement that are going to make you feel like, oh my gosh, wait, I'm on the path again. I feel good about this. Um, Personally, I love having coaches that are going to walk me through these things uh, and the whole accountability thing. like like it's kind of necessary and for creating those habits and things like 
like that. Some people are amazing doing it on their own, but most of us do need some guidance, some help, and we need somebody that's kind of holding us accountable to actually be accomplishing what our goals are going to be. Maybe instead of archiving your entire Instagram feed when you don't go viral, you just tweak your content strategy. Or instead of quitting your launch when somebody doesn't sign up the first day, you keep going. There's yes. definitely, I mean, I've had some like, I could do a whole podcast episode about the launch mindset and how I've had some launches where I'm like, hey, I'm just like finishing this to like, to get the gold star, to say I did it, to say I stayed in the boat. I love how you mentioned coaching though, because I think, I think there are two veins of thought of like, oh, I can do this by myself. I can kind of power through. And I've never been that person. You know, I am very disciplined over, it's funny, I wasn't disciplined when I started a business, but over four years I've become it. But I still need that accountability, that validation, you know, a little bit of external validation is not wrong or emotional validation. Have you ever tried hypnotherapy though? Have you gotten into that yet? So I haven't, I have a couple clients that do it, but because they're my clients, I've never like actually had their sessions. I feel like it would be a little bit weird, but I, I do think in my lifetime, I'm probably going to try hypnotherapy. There's a couple of subconscious weird fears that I have. And I don't know why I'm like, I don't know if this is from my lifetime, um, but in order so here so this one's very specific but um I'm not trying to get pregnant anytime soon but Mm -hmm. every time anybody brings up their pregnancy story about them having kids or any terms related to giving birth at all I get incredibly like lightheaded and nauseous and I have gotten sick in public without any like um preparation like it just happens and I don't know why at all like I've never had any issues with pregnancy and it started maybe it started in college like I took a class um a developmental psych class and I I took that class did you Yeah. yeah and and we went through like one you know module or whatever about pregnancy and I had to leave the room twice in one week it was so embarrassing And since then, I've had a couple bad times. And so to me, I'm like, if I do ever want to get pregnant, I know I'm going to need to figure out the subconscious fear because I don't know how to deal with it myself. And I think that's why hypnotherapy and like other spiritual modalities can really help you sometimes see the things that you're not aware of or like consciously being present with. That's so crazy. I wonder if you died in childbirth in a past life. Maybe. Like, I don't know. And some people are saying, you know, there's like Akashic records about your past. And there's, um, there's a couple different things that I could potentially do. But I also am like, if I do get pregnant, it's going to be years. So Um, I'm not going to worry about it just yet. But have you done hypnotherapy? Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. I started hypnotherapy. I get pumped about ask me about, I need a shirt that's like, ask me about hypnotherapy and I'll tell you. So, uh, obviously put it in the show notes. I did a session with one of my past clients back in November and it was like life-changing, uh, backtrack though. I have done EMDR therapy. So I've done the bilateral stimulation, which hypnotherapy and EMDR are they come from the same thing. They do getting into whether it's somatic into your body and processing trauma, or it's getting into your subconscious. I, my OBM Rain works with Addison Bowden, link her down below. Um, she has a little hypno bundle, link it down below, but she has one specifically. And I don't have like a fear of success, but I've definitely been working through more self-trust and really building that confidence. And I had this like fear that I uncovered in hypnotherapy about being a number two to someone else. And so I have to have someone, like I had to have someone to position my success under it. And it comes from, I have an older brother who I was always compared to, love him to death, not super healthy for a child, ego and stuff like that. And then in my career, I was an assistant manager. I was always helping someone else. And when I got into business, it was kind of the same relationship. 
So it was like this weird unconscious belief that I like it surfaced through hypnotherapy, which like when I drink hypnotherapy too, I pass out. I'm like, when they're like doing it, they're like, so they always tell you to go down these stairs. And then it's like, after the stairs, I'm like, I'm out. I'm drooling on my pillow. I'm good to go. And then it's like, wake up and I'm like, I'm back. And I'm like, no clue what just happened in this, but it's like the things come up. Right. And so I had to work through this of like, kind of this fear of being seen, but also this like, oh, I can be quote unquote, the best and not have to position someone above me. But it's been so crazy because it's like strategy is really good as you're starting out to have a strategy. But as you scale, it truly comes like it comes in those quiet moments. It's the meditation, the journaling, the hypnotherapy, the, you know, having the space to regulate your nervous system back down. And even I'm like the other side of me is like, I'm a bath person. If I could live in the bathtub, I would like I would be in there all the time. I take baths almost every single day I can like without driving up our water bill. And so that's the other thing that I think a lot of people, when you no longer have the distraction of a nine to five and have this really packed out schedule, it is an opportunity to start healing, but it's also scary because it's like, you've operated at this level for so long. And then it's like, okay, let's deconstruct your world and then like reconstruct it. But I've honestly loved hypnotherapy. It's been I mean, it's like the greatest nap I've ever taken too, which like if you're a nap person, just put your headphones in, you take a nap, you wake up and you're like, good to go. It's interesting because I feel like things are like, for some reason I get the visual image of like when they did the ice plug in Antarctica and they like pull up this plug and it shows like all these things. That's how I feel sometimes our subconscious are where it's like you buried all these things for so long, but it is an opportunity to take that belief and rewrite, like rewrite it and like work through it and start building a new belief where I don't think most people would have the opportunity if they were in entrepreneurship. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you get, you're, you're expected to get more time back to kind of dive deeper within yourself. And um, I'm curious if when you went into that session in November, like, was there anything that you were kind of thinking of beforehand that related to being a number two? Or did that really just like pop up out of nowhere? And you're like, oh my gosh, this is it. So that came from a recent session. Oh, okay. My November session was more of like uncovering traumatic money beliefs. Mm. Well, like the fear of being number two, just like I had been doing hypnotherapy for a little bit and I was like confidence, self-trust, like, you know, I always joke, I'm like, I'm a bad bitch. I've always been a bad bitch. Like, but it just like bubbled up one day as I was, I was doing like the pre-journaling and it was like, what beliefs do you have that are no longer yours? And it just like popped into my head and I was like, where did this come? Like, I'm like, where are you? Like, who are you? And so that's been the other piece of like, I think at some point, if you're doing a lot of journaling, you're doing a lot of meditation and you don't feel like you're progressing. I hate to use that word because it's like, there is no progress. It's kind of just a growth. It's like, start digging into your subconscious. It's kind of like with therapy too. I was really good at talking about my therapy and re- or my trauma and removing myself from trauma. And then it was like, okay, you're not actually processing this and healing it. So it was like, do you want to go through something like EMDR? And I was like, of course not. But I was like, you know, I'll try it. And then I actually did uh, like nine months of EMDR almost every week. It was miserable. I hated it. It was terrible. It's not a great experience, y'all. It's bad. But it's good because you start processing through that trauma and you're not creating that additional piece. And so that's kind of, I think that was part of like, I did a lot of healing around my trauma and that's what allowed my subconscious to start releasing some of these beliefs. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I kind of picture it in as almost like this fog, like we're just almost covered in this fog. And when we're just going through the steps day to day, but we're not like sitting with ourselves and actually working on ourselves and what we're thinking in our minds and kind of letting that part of us be open up, then we're just pushing it back and back and back. And that fog is just getting heavier and heavier on us. So yeah, 100%, like as an entrepreneur, pulling in any type of like spiritual tools um, or things that you believe in, I definitely think is going to create a lot more balance in your life. I agree too. Well, we're at like, we're at like almost over 45 minutes. 
for those of you who are listening who love you and want to get to know you where do they find you the best place is instagram at shannon g dot virtually s-h-a-n-n-o-n the letter g a period and then virtually v-i-r-t-u-a-l-l-y that's the best place um everything's linked there and I do dabble in TikTok but it's very much like a fun side of things it's not it's not anything that you would need to follow yet so that's where I found you was so TikTok. Instagram really yeah I that's guess where I, I found mean, you yeah that's true that's true um I guess people I mean I have, I think, like 400 followers or something, but it's not something that I'm like trying to really grow. It's more just like things that I enjoy. I'm just going to post over there when I want to, but actual content and education and like community is going to be on Instagram for me. Yeah, definitely. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's where I found you. And then I have a really good habit though. If I find someone on TikTok that I like, I go follow them on Instagram because I've noticed that TikTok to Instagram doesn't always translate or Instagram to TikTok, but it's like Instagram, you can still get in people's DMs. TikTok's starting to roll it out though. They're like seeing the power in it. So yeah, that's true. Oh God, I love social media. Oh, I love social media. If you have loved today's episode, make sure that you rate and review the Salesy Podcast on whatever your preferred platform is. Rating and reviews does help us push out to more people, get more listeners, and be able to serve you deeper. If you haven't, go ahead and check out the show notes. We have everything linked down there. And if you are listening to this episode and you love it, go ahead and screenshot it, share it on Instagram, and tag me. Before we leave today, I want to remind you that Scale to 5K is still open for enrollment. This is a signature group program focusing on laying your business foundations, helping you hit 5K cash months consistently, so over 6 and 12 months, and being able to build your online business. This has graduated over 100 students, and this framework is near and dear to my heart because it actually helped me make my own first 5K in my business and helped me rebuild my business after leaving last year. So if you are called and ready, go ahead click down into the show notes the sales page is linked down there and I will see you on another episode of salesy